Hey guys, what's up, Green Machine Sam? Back with another video. And of course, today we have another Madden 24 roster update guide. Now, this is for the fifth round rookies. So, picks one through 176 are live on my roster, as well as a ton of jersey number updates. Players being added to teams, you know, some veteran pieces being added to teams now that the draft is over and kind of seeing where the dust settles. Teams are going to start adding veteran pieces to those positions that they did not or were not able to address in the draft. Now, first and foremost, this is a PS5 exclusive roster. Sorry to anybody that is on Xbox or on PC. Cross files are, well, cross play is not on Madden in terms of files and stuff like that. The only thing it is available on is actually playing head to head against a different person on a different console. That's the only thing that I know of that you can actually go and do. So let's get into the roster. Now, first and foremost, I'm going to go over a lot of information for anybody that is new here. I just like to go over all the information so that you guys have it readily available. If you guys don't want to stick around for that stuff, if you guys have already been here and you guys just want to see the fifth round rookies shown off a little bit, go ahead and skip to the time mark down below on the video and it will take you straight there so you guys can just see the rookies and not have to deal with all the information being given to you if you've already heard this speech multiple times or even once or twice and you just don't want to hear it again. So, first and foremost, of course, there are some things that I'm not able to do inside of Madden. Um, I can't change dev traits. A lot of people ask me about that. Why do none of the rookies have dev traits? I'm not allowed to give anybody dev traits. I can't change dev traits either for current or existing players inside of Madden. That's something you're going to have to do inside your franchise when you go to play. That's first and foremost. I also can't change age, contract numbers, experience, and I th think there's something else, but I may be forgetting... But I cannot change those items, okay? I can't change age. I can't change experience. I can't change contract numbers. There is a workaround to get years. You know, you just have to lower somebody's overall or raise it to get a certain amount of years. But the actual contract money, I cannot change or do anything with, unfortunately. Madden just does not allow us to do any of that stuff. I wish they did. It would make the rosters a lot more usable and a lot more fun. And franchise wouldn't be such a pain to set up every single time you want to go in and create a new one. But unfortunately... Madden slash EA doesn't allow me to do that. Secondly, let's head over and let's download the roster and then I'll show you guys some other stuff that is going on as well as we'll go over some more information as we go through the rookies and everything like that. So first and foremost, you guys are going to head over to the creation center where you would basically go edit the rosters if you really wanted to. But instead of going to edit rosters, you guys are going to go to share and manage files, download community files. Of course, like always, I'm going to say this once and I'll say it again. You have to, you have to download the community file every single time you want it. So, you will go, we'll, you will go download it. If you're new, the screen will not pop up. If this is the, your first time downloading this roster, it will not pop up. If you already have it downloaded, this section will pop up, and it will say either overwrite my file or save it as a new file, just depending if you've kept the name of the Madden 25 roster update. You could have named it something else, so there is that. And you guys are going to want to go to load and delete. Go over to your roster section and load the roster. I load it twice just to be safe. You know, with me personally having to put a lot of time and effort into this roster. I accidentally did start the fifth round um, with not the lo loaded roster. So I made the first three rookies and then realized, oh shit, I got to go fo fucking back and fix those guys. Now, a couple other things I have begun working on is custom depth charts as well. I will say it's only done for like two teams right now, the Bears and the Commanders, which you would have seen me be playing in my Bears latest Bears video. Like I said, I have been updating jersey numbers as well. Some players are older than, you know, some jersey numbers are a little bit older and people have seen them and stuff like that. I'm not going to go over the jersey numbers. Um, if you want to, go check out NFL jersey numbers on Twitter. That's my main source, and then I do go through team teams when I'm having to change more than like four players like if I'm like okay what the fuck is this dude supposed to be wearing I normally go through and I normally I normally go through the whole team and just end up changing everybody that I can find anyway that they have listed on their active unit now of course let's get into the fifth round rookies and stuff and then if there's any more information that I remember afterwards I will go ahead and tell you guys that as well so of course with pick 136 the seattle seahawks went pritchett uh a corner out of auburn of course like i said if i get any information on a player wrong 
And I'm not talking about like, oh, he's actually 186 instead of 185, or he's six one, and NFL.com had him uh, listed wrong. Don't fucking care. I really don't. That's something you can change. I don't think that's going to change much for most players, right? So there's no point in me putting an update out just for a dude for getting one inch taller. Uh, here is where he, where is he at? Still, the cornerback out of. Maryland, he went, and they immediately took another corner. We're just not going to come back to to them. We're not going to skip over one player just to come back to them one pick later at the same position. They took Cam Hart at pick 140. Then you go to the Commanders, and they picked a linebacker in Jordan McGee. Most linebackers I make or most stand-up backers I make are going to be listed as middle linebackers. If you want to move them and change their overall back down, that's up to you. But for now, they're just going to be listed as middle backers. Cedric Von Prawn, one of my favorite players that I actually wanted the Bears to grab. He ends up going to the Bills, and then, of course, the Colts get a little shifty guy in Anthony Gould. J.D. Bertrand, Betrand, uh, going to the Falcons, another linebacker. Not the greatest athlete, Austin Booker. You guys have already seen, because I did make him for my Bears video, he is on the Bears. He does get an updated jersey number as well since you've last seen him. Chris Abrams Drain goes to the Broncos, a very good corner with high upside, in my opinion. They also took a running back in Audric Estime, Estime, uh, good power back. Not the fastest guy, but good power back. Tommy Eichenberg out of Ohio State goes to the Raiders next. So they do get a linebacker to help, come help fill in some holes and stuff like that. Josh Newton goes to the Bengals, a corner as well. He'll slot into their fourth string right now uh, in terms of Madden at least. Spencer, Spencer Rattler and, of course, Tr Jordan Travis did go in the fifth round. Their overalls are going to be a little bit different. So, of course, like you guys have seen with the other rookie quarterbacks, their overalls are not based upon just the draft itself and their positioning. It's based off of, you know, lowering overalls for QBs so that it doesn't create a vacuum. It doesn't create a bad, you know, situation in an overpowered quarterback class. So, what I did was, he would have originally been a 69, but minus the four rounds for the second, third, fourth, and fifth, he drops to a 65. So, of course, Jordan Travis will be a 64. So, they will be lower than their counterparts that are in the same round and in the same little group of players. But it, it, it's the best way I could think of doing things so that, so that you know, they're, they're not overpowered and they're not, you know, low-end starters and high-tier backups going into, you know, the second fucking season. Jalen uh, Carley's out of Missouri, safety, and then the Eagles took a specialist, a kind of tweener if I remember correctly, uh, Aeneas Smith out of Texas A&M. DeAndre P Prince, cornerback, goes to the Jaguars. Here he is. He's down the list a little bit because of how many corners they do have currently at the moment, but still a good player nonetheless. Brennan Jackson goes to the Rams, another uh, front seven guy that they're going to add, hopefully creating a good pass rush now that Aaron Donald is gone. The Eagles ended up picking up the legacy player in Jeremiah Trotter. Like I said, he's a little bit smaller. You could definitely kick him out to right outside backer. That's more than acceptable. If you want to, you can lower his overall. Once you kick him out there, it's up to you. I don't really care enough. Uh, Jamari Thrash goes to the Browns here. Another receiver they're taking out of, uh, okay. I guess Louisville didn't show up on his college for some reason. I'll have to fix that. Like I said, if you guys see anything major like that, like colleges or something of that nature, that's, you know, fixable and will kind of impact some things, I will more than willing do, to do that. Shaw Smith-Wade, somebody that was not announced correctly in the draft, Shaw Smith-Wade. Mohamed Kamara going to the Dolphins. Uh, they had another edge rusher. He'll probably, he'll probably end up making the roster as that fifth edge rusher. I don't know exactly how many edge rushers a lot of teams carry into the regular season, but I would assume five is about average. Hunter Norzad here out of Penn State, or Norzad. Then the Bills took a stand-up backer. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this dude's name. If you guys know how to pronounce it, go ahead. And it didn't have a uh, how to pronounce on Wikipedia, so I'm not even going to attempt that. Hampton, or Dominique Hampton, going to the Commanders here. He is going to be a backup. Um, you could easily move some of these other guys over. I would personally move to Tavius Martin just because of his speed, and Dominique Campton kind of fits that mold of Jem Jeremy Chin already, so you could definitely have him as a backup. But if you like Percy Butler, then of course you can leave whoever you want. 
I don't like messing with some positions, some other positions like offensive line and defensive line, where it's harder to get rid of some of these guys and get the uh, get players that are aren't supposed to be on the team cut down because of roster requirements. Uh, I will move some offensive and defensive linemen around just to get those positions filled and everything. Chris Jones here, one of the guys that I personally liked in this draft class, especially where he was drafted. Um, there, I, I might make a change next year. By the way, Let, I'm gonna go more on this, but I might make a change on how I do some of the stuff next year for the draft. Then, then I've just recently thought of that I think will make the draft class even ba- better. Jacob Monk here out of Duke going to Green Bay, so they get a good backup center. Then the Colts took Jalen Simpson, another one of those big kind of sturdy linebacker-esque safeties. I think there was like three of them in this in this fifth round that were taken. These big burly safeties that are strong safeties. A couple of them were listed as guys that could move down in the box in a role kind of like the Cowboys have for some of their safeties. Rasheen Ali going to the Ravens. One of my favorite running backs in the draft. Somebody I would have liked the Bears to take if we needed a running back. They didn't need one at this point, so he is on the Ravens. Of course, like I said, some of these guys don't have actual jersey numbers yet. Once they are announced, I will gladly fix them. Tyrone Tacey out of Tracy out of Purdue going to the Giants. Keelian Robinson, uh, the return specialist going to the T- Jaguars out of Texas. Then J- Javon Solomon going to the Bills. A uh, a pass, a pass rush special, specialist out of Troy. I know he had pretty good production, if I remember correctly, going there to the Bills, hopefully adding some more pass rush if they need to, especially with the un, unknowing of what Von Miller's actually going to be. Yeah, Kin, Kitten Aladapo Al- 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 uh, out of Oregon State, another one of those big, burly safeties. Bub Means, like I said, some of the players that do have like a name that they go by and then their actual name, like Gerard Bub Means, if you want to change him, go ahead. You can easily do that, and he doesn't have Pitt as well. What the fuck is going on? I must be stupid. And then, of course, we go to Jordan Travis, who you guys will have seen. Uh, well, not actually have seen. Jordan Travis out of Florida State. Then we go to Trevor Keegan, one of those other guys on that Michigan O-line going to the Eagles where he's going to have a chance to maybe compete over the next couple years for a starting spot, especially against Tyler Steen or even against Mekhi Becton. I would highly doubt they move Mekhi Becton into guard, but then again, Landon Dickerson, 6'6", 332, it's not that big of a difference. Or if or if Lane Johnson's willing to kick inside and they think they can fix Mekhi Becton, I guess that could be an option. Or Becton could just be that swing tackle if one of their guys do face some injuries. Then, of course, we do have Isaiah Davis. Going to the Jets, they picked up two bigger, burly running backs that are more downhill. I guess that's just more in regards to their hoping that... I mean, yes, Abanakondai and Hall are both good home run hitters. So I would assume that's probably why they took two burly running backs, but I don't really understand that. Uh, Maybe they just want to have some secure protection. And of course, if that offensive line breaks down, uh, those bigger bruising backs are a little bit easier to get yards with. Kalen Carson out of Wake Forest going to the Cowboys. Two picks left. Jalen Ford going to the Saints. I originally had him listed as a right outside backer, but like I said, I want to move all these stand-up backers into middle backer, and then you can move them out if you want to. And Jatwan Stiggers out of... God damn it, I should probably not have said that name. uh, Out of... The CFL going to the Jets, and that rounds out the fifth round. I know a lot of people were saying that they were waiting for the fifth round, so here it is. Um, like I said, so I'm going to pull something up real quick just just to make sure I don't get any of my information incorrect. But, okay, but first I'm going to go over this. Uh, so, picks 172 through 206 is a 66, and then... Another 30 picks after that. So the, the, the sixth round is basically going to be split up into two parts, basically, when I do get around to making it. So 177 to one, I think it's like 201 or something like that. Maybe 202, 206, something around that nature. Those are all 66. After that, it drops down to 65. And then about 235. 
No, 225 is where it drops down to 64. I don't know. You guys can look down below in the description. You guys will have a better look at it. I closed out my window too fast. I didn't realize it. But that will kind of give you guys the layout of what overalls will be. So if you're not really too interested in, of course, the 6th and 7th rounders, because they're mainly going to be 66 to 6, anywhere from 64 to 66 overalls, and you don't plan on keeping those players around, especially on practice squads or anything like that, I would suggest just starting your franchise. It's not that big of a deal. It's probably going to take me time. I'm probably going to divide the, the, the rounds into probably four sections and get half done per day. Hell, this just took me, I'm pretty sure, like nine hours to complete the 41 fucking players. It, it's a fucking mess, especially with the Madden menus and everything, and that's a story for a different day and everything. I do have, so I do have two colleges that I do need to go fix on a couple players. So those will be updated hopefully by the time you guys are seeing this video as well as other stuff. And one thing that I, I kind of want to just gauge because I'm going to have more uh, audience eyes on this video than anything else is next year, do you guys want me to pick out maybe two or three players that I personally like that I think are going to be high-end value targets in each round after they're drafted and say, hey, he's getting a boom, bump to his overall. So a guy like Christian Jones, the right tackle out of Texas, I personally liked him. We could bump him up, I don't know, two overall points. So instead of him being a 67, he's a 69 because I think he has high upside. And I think he could start or even at least play relatively early, early with the Cardinals because I don't particularly believe in Jonah Williams. And I don't know if Paris Johnson played left tackle or if they would even be willing to move him to left tackle at this point. Uh, so, you know, Christian Jones could move over to left tackle and he could be a player starting right away. And then depending on what happens, of course, with Isaac, uh, Osiris Torrance, because, you know, he didn't have a particularly great rookie year, and Lalelle Collins, and even David Edwards. I could t see Cedric Von Prahn playing, possibly, within the first couple weeks of the season, just because I think he's so good. He was a three-year starter. He's somebody I wanted the Bears to go out and get. You know, I could pick out three, maybe four guys each round, and they each get an overall boost. You know, I, I think three guys would be pretty cool. You know, so somebody like Cedric Von Prahn. Especially for the later rounds, maybe fourth and beyond. I want to probably do it for like the third or the second. And definitely not for the first. I don't want to do that. It's supposed to be a 73 jumping up to a 76. Um, or maybe there's just one guy in the first, one guy, two guys in the second, three guys in the third, four guys in the fourth. Something of that nature, right? Something where I'm boosting a player's overall that I'm currently making because I want them to be a higher overall because I think they're going to start right away. They're going to be an impactful player. They have high potential that I particularly think is going to be utilized. And I think they're going to be just a good player in the NFL. Would you guys want to see something like that? So give that little bit of added boost to picking a player that I think is going to be good. Now, of course, this is all subjective and opinion based because then it's just me picking out players that, you know, I was trying to avoid the unbiased thing that I have stated in previous uh, videos, which, which I forgot to mention this. If you are new here. The way I do my rosters is over, it's all overall based, based off of when you are picked and not how I think of a player. So I know I'm kind of going against myself there in that regard, but this is how I've done my draft classes for the four or five years now that I've done them. I think I've done for four years, I've done as many players I can possibly do for five years. I think I did the, for the fifth year, I did just rounds one through three because I didn't really care that much. So. For the four years that I've done it, it's all been overall based. This is the first time that we're doing quarterback, kicker, and uh, punter special overalls based off of when they are picked and stuff like that, not breaking the game, of course. But would you guys want to see something like that where, like, a Cedric Von Prahn, because he's a, one of my favorite players coming out of the draft, I'll give him a boost up to, like, a 69, maybe even a 70, or even just a 68, just to give him that little bit of added boost to get him going in the correct direction, especially because... Like I said, I can't add dev traits and stuff like that to these rookies. If that's something you guys would like to see, maybe next year we could definitely look into that. Of course, that's a year away at this point. So, you know, uh, it's not on the horizon right now. But still, I, th I think it would be a good key addition just to make a couple players a little bit more usable. Give the steals of what I feel like are the draft a little bit better of a situation. Like I said... I don't know when I'm going to have six round done. I'm not too particularly worried about getting it done. Trust me, I've spent basically half my weekend just fucking doing roster updates and creating rookies and shit. 
trust me, I'm going to go play some games for a little bit. I'm going to get this video out, and I'm probably going to go play some games for a little bit. I'm kind of excited to get back to Titans franchise and play that again. I still have three videos on the back burner right now. And then, of course, I have a Bears video and some other stuff that I do want to get out. So if you guys do want to see that content, please stick around and subscribe. I appreciate all the support that you guys have shown on the roster. My Twitter following has doubled, which is fucking phenomenal. I greatly appreciate that. I appreciate everybody sh showing support on all platforms. Um, I'm hoping to start streaming. Like I've, I I've been saying this for a while. I know I have. But I finally have good internet. I finally have a decent mic. I think I have a decent setup at least. Um, I would like to get a camera and start streaming potentially in the in the near future hopefully getting that going maybe over the summer or something of that nature like i said if you guys do want to see any other videos here on my channel go check out um i do have roster updates off-season content and bears videos um that are more recent than other anything else on the channel like i said if you guys want to stick around for more roster updates and anything else like that please stick around and subscribe and i'll be back with more videos like this but with that being said i'm out peace